blasting, billowing, bursting forth with the power of 10 billion butterfly sneezes. I'm Tom Bain, and this is Wine, Money, and Song. If you're interested in wines and wanting to find out the best values, please subscribe. In the last few weeks, I've drank uh, a number of wines, and I want to keep you up to date. I found some really nice wines, and one wine I had really spun my head, and I think it's an outstanding wine and uh, priced very well, but that'll be later on. Um, I celebrated my 29th wedding anniversary recently, and at the dinner we made, me and my wife, uh, my wife Gloria, it's been 29 years, and I remember at our wedding, my friends were taking bets it wasn't going to last a year. And uh, me and my wife both have very big type A personalities, and they didn't know how we were going to coexist, but hey, who knew? Uh, so the two wines we had are our dinner. We had a very, very nice scallop dinner, uh, sea scallops. And uh, we had Tattinger 2006. And Tattinger is one of my favorite champagnes. I love the style. It's very elegant. Uh, and, and it's very crisp, clean, uh, very, very different than uh, some of the bigger styles. This is a more elegant style. But saying that, the 2006 was very rich for the Tattinger Comte de Champagne. And uh, maybe it was the aging process that it's uh, aged well. But excellent wine, very, very rich. and went well with the scallops. The second sparkling wine was the Lorne Noir a special club and this is a hard wine to find it's a grower champagne uh, I buy it from California uh, and it's less than it's about a third of the price of the Tattinger um, I like the wine very much it's a richer style rounder style <clears throat> and I thought the dosage was a little higher uh, but still it balanced out the wine and uh, it's a 2013 very, very rich. And that's what we had for our 29th wedding anniversary. Uh, also, I was to a dinner. Uh, Charles Schwab, my uh, financial advisor there, invited me to Smith & Walensky uh, Steakhouse. And uh, they had a promotion for Waku beef, the Japanese beef. And they served five California Cabernets <coughs> with the uh, beef. And one of the wines was the Camus Cabernet Sauvignon 2021. Now, it's a very controversial wine, Camus. And originally, Chuck Wagner, in 1972, he made 240 cases. And for about 20 years, they made some of the best cabs in California. But since then, the sun took over and has increased production. And He's become very successful. He makes about 65,000 cases, and you see it in every steakhouse. But it's very controversial. And when I tasted it, I, you know, I haven't tasted Camus, God, in 10 years or so. Uh, and when I tasted it, there's no there there. You know, it's a well-made wine, but it, it, it just didn't have, it didn't taste like Napa to me. And... It, it was there, it has no flaws in it, but it's probably the most popular wine at most steakhouses. And they charge like 150, 200 bucks a bottle for it. And I just didn't see it, you know, I just didn't see it. So just be aware of that. Now, there are a lot of people who like it and I know it gets high ratings, but to me, it's a little insipid, it's, it's okay. You know, but uh, paying, when, when I was in Costco, I noticed they had a big display of it. And it was like $80 a bottle. I was in New Hampshire, the state control stores, they have cut cases of it. And I think it was $90. You could do a lot better. It, you know, you could do a lot better than uh, spending that type of money. But to each their own, if you like it and you like spending the money, you want to go out in the steakhouse and drop 150, 200, go ahead. 
So some of the other wines uh, I've been trying the last few weeks uh, and that have really stood out. Uh, as I said, there's one of these next six wines uh, that I think is uh, outstanding wine and a really screaming value, but we'll get to that later. Uh, the first wine that I thought highly was, was believe it or not, a Costco Kirkland Sancerre. Uh, and if you know anything about Sancerre, Sancerre is an area in the Loire Valley in France, and it's famous for Puy Fume and Sancerre, and it produces some of the greatest Sauvignon Blanc in the world. And uh, I know that New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc uh, is very popular, but it's very different than Loire since, you know, than Sancerre from uh, Sauvignon Blanc from Sancerre in France because it's the Sancerre is much richer, uh, rounder and more serious wine while the, most of the New Zealand Sauvignon Blancs are lighter and, and fruit in your face, but lacks that. This wine $16, $17. It's a little ripe because of the 2022, but try this wine. Uh, most Sancerre's are 30 bucks. So great value. Second wine. Prio Pan, Suave Classico. Uh, I'm a big fan of Suave, and people know Suave's Lake Guardia, where Valpolicella and Bartolino are. They make light, very crisp wines, and this Suave is very light bodied, uh, crisp wines with high acidity, uh, <coughs> white flowers, uh, really crisp, and, and really easy to drink. Uh, under $20. Excellent Suave. And you should be looking at more of the wines from Italy, the white wines. You really can't beat the quality and the price. The third wine is Chateau Neuf de Pop from the Rhone Valley. Uh, May Bois Lausanne, Chateau Neuf de Pop, 2015. Uh, this is from my cellar. Uh, the 2015 vintage is a very warm vintage, very ripe and round. And this wine was delicious. And I think I paid $40 for it. It's very hard to find Chateau Neuf for that price nowadays. It was very rich. Uh, a lot of uh, me a meaty quality to it uh, and a roundness to it. And you want to serve it with rich foods. But for $40... Maybe the newer vintages are 50 or so, but really good Chateau Neuf. And the fourth wine is Castellari Chianti Classico. And if you notice, there's a bird on the label. Uh, this estate has a bird sanctuary on it, and all their wines have different pretty birds on it. But I have a story. First of all, the wine's very good. It's 2022, but it's a very big style for Chianti. And, and I tend to like the more elegant styles. And I have another Chianti later on that I like a little more because it's more elegant. But the Castellari is very good. But to my Castellari story, back in 1983, I was working for Weinbow and Weinbow was going to introduce Castellari. So we had a sales meeting and uh, we were all there in Hohokus, New Jersey. But in that day, uh, in 1983, we had the blizzard of 1983 and it was just starting in the afternoon. <clears throat> so I told my boss, Leonardo Lacasio, who was one of the owners of Weinbow at the time, I go, let's get out of here. I go, I have my new car here and I don't want to get stuck with it. I go, I, I got to get over to George Washington Bridge and get home. He says, I don't worry about it. So we're winding down about 1.30. I go, can we go? He goes, no, the guy from Castellari's here and he's going to introduce his wine to you. I go, make it quick. So the guy gets up there and he starts talking and he doesn't stop. He doesn't stop for an hour. And I keep looking at my boss, Leonardo. Leonardo, let's go. Let's get out of here. And it's snowing like crazy. And the guy's talking about how they use chestnut wood 
to age the wine and me. I don't give a crap about his chestnut uh, barrels. Uh, I want to get home. So he speaks for an hour and 15 minutes. We run out of that place. So sure enough, on the George Washington Bridge in my new uh, Toyota Celica, I get stuck on it for like six, seven hours. We don't move. And then we get off, and I know a few side streets to get to the Whitestone Bridge where I live on the other side. So it takes another five hours. And then we get to the bridge. It's closed. It never closes. So what do we do? And it's snowing like crazy. It's snowing like crazy. So I go to the Throgs Neck Bridge, uh, which is a few miles away. And I follow a snowplow over the top. And what happens at the bottom of the bridge? A pickup truck comes from behind me and hits me, pokes a hole in my brand new car, and he runs. I never got home that night. I had to sleep on my parents' uh, couch. Uh, and the car had a hole in it. The guy left the scene of the, and what a disaster. What a disaster. And in that way, Castellari is not a, um, uh, a good memory. <laughs> so much for Castellari and what a blizzard that was. That was one of the big blizzards ever. The next wine is the wine that I feel very, very strongly about the the Ratti Ocetti Nebbiolo. Uh, this is a wine from Pimante, and as you know, Pimante uh, has Barolo and Barbaresco, and it's made from Nebbiolo. And sometimes this is the younger vines, or it's in this in the vineyards that's not considered good enough uh, for the two top wines, Barolo and Barbaresco. It's outside, uh, so. They just put it as Nebbiolo. And generally the wines are lighter and maybe not as, uh, and the vines are younger. Uh, but this wine, the 2021 uh, uh, Ocetti Nebbiolo, it is so elegant. And when you pour out the wine, it looks like rose water, dark rose water. It's very light, very clean, uh, incredibly elegant wine. And it tastes like roses, just very floral. It doesn't have some of the tar that a lot of uh, Nebbiolos have. It's more on the elegant side and more floral and uh, very, very light to medium bodied, lightly colored, but just uh, Nebbiolo is said to be somewhat like Pinot Noir to a great degree. And this is one wine that it reminded me of the elegance of Pinot Noir. And for a wine between 20 and $25, uh, tremendous wine, tremendous. And this is easily uh, available in, mo in most markets. And the last wine is another Chianti Classico. Bramosia Chianti Classico 2020. And it's made by Donna Laura, who, who has a big following and I have a problem with most Chiantis nowadays. They're a bit too much extracted, too big, too ripe. And I like the more elegant style. This is the more elegant style. And the wine was ripe, round, but still very elegant and very Sangiovese. And uh, it was just so easy to drink uh, and very prototypical of Sangiovese. So those are nine wines I talked about. And I would pay a lot of attention, if you're a white wine drinker, to the Kirkland Sancerre. Now, is it great Sancerre? No, but it is. It is close. It's a little ripe for my taste, but for $17, go out there. And uh, the Rete Ocetti Nebbiolo is a screaming value. So that's what I've been drinking lately.